Hello. We're going to take a look today at uh, two printers I have here. Uh, it's the Epson PictureMate MP400 and one Canon uh, a Selfie CP1200. Uh, these are two printers that are uh, of uh, the type compact uh, photo printers. And uh, this one is at 200 and this one is at 100. Uh, you know, we're going to take a look at them today from the perspective of uh, you know, not necessarily making a review about general photo printing, but, you know, rather a subset of that. Someone who has uh, similar needs as me, essentially, where I'm um, just printing these for myself or share with friends. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to create a big uh, sort of uh, framed pictures that I'm going to hang up or, uh, you know, I'm not trying to, like, sell any of these works. Uh, you know, it's just for fun. It's just for myself. And as such, one of the first uh, thing I basically... Uh, cut down as a criteria is basically I just want to print stuff no bigger than a 4x6 and uh, interestingly you know with that one factor there's really not that many choices at all uh, these are pretty much the only two that I can find that are you know uh, reasonable within that uh, range uh, so again you know if I'm trying to do something very serious then uh, I'm probably going to go to an online printing service this is purely a product I w want for convenience to just be able to you know, at a whims, just kind of print stuff out. So if that kind of sounds like what you want to do with a printer as well, then keep watching. Uh, what we're going to go through is a bit of what I feel about each of these printers, uh, go through the theory part of it, and then take a look at what they ended up printing. Uh, so first of all, you know, just looking at the, the physical appearance, this is, you know, clearly a bit bigger. Uh, although the size is a bit deceptive, um, the Canon, what it'll do is, in fact, it needs to have enough clearance in the back to be able to pull the uh, photo all the way out, and then it'll eject it in the back, and then kind of go back and forth uh, as it prints multiple layers, and we'll describe that later on. Uh, so this, in fact, does probably take up a bit more footprint, in fact, than the Epson here. Um, although the Epson, one issue I would have with the design is that um, you essentially have to put the paper on top and the glossy side, which is effectively the side you're printing stuff onto, is uh, exposed. Uh, so, you know, as you leave it out all day long, perhaps, you know, one concern I would have is that it'll get dirty and then that whole thing will actually feed itself into the printer, whereas the Canon here is enclosed in this little cassette thing. Um, so that's, you know, not bad. Uh, besides that, um, you know, this being the more expensive product, uh, is, it feels a bit more uh, rich in terms of the interface it presents as well, you know, in terms of the software and the driver on the computer, you get a bit more choices and whatnot. So, uh, you know, not too big of a difference, but there's that. Uh, in terms of the type of prints uh, it can uh, make, make, the Epson makes uh, three sizes, which are here. 4x6 is probably the most common, but you can print 5x7. Uh, whereas the Canon here, it can print 4x6 and 2x3, which are kind of just a wallet size. Uh, cars. Uh, but again, none of these go up any higher to sort of uh, the letter sizes or anything uh, even bigger. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, what I wanted, as I stated initially. I care a bit about the uh, printing technology uh, that each of these printers use. Uh, the Epson here is uh, an inkjet die-based system, and the Canon is a die sublimation-based system. So they both use uh, dyes, which are essentially uh, water-soluble uh, inks uh, that gets applied onto the medium. Uh, neither of them uses uh, pigment-based uh, ink, which is something that a more uh, high-end uh, system would use, you know, some, or somewhere in the higher 400 to 1000 range in terms of the price. Uh, again, that's not necessarily something we need. Um, between the two systems, I think the pigment is uh, more meant for longer life uh, archival uses, whereas the dye has a, a nicer brilliance right off the bat. It has a longer, uh, it has a bigger color gamut, um, but you know it could potentially fade if you hang it onto the wall and subject it to a lot of UV light. Uh, so that's one difference. Uh, now amongst the dyes, you know, uh, again these two uses a different method for application of the dye. The Epson here uses a inkjet application mechanism, something that we're kind of familiar with uh, desktop printing. It essentially applies heat onto the nozzles and um, that ejects the ink onto the uh, paper. And in the you know recent years, it's gotten good enough that in fact, uh, uh, some of the negative properties of it, which is the fact that it drops these discrete uh, dots of ink, 
uh, has gotten to a such a high resolution that is you know applicable for photo printing now. The Canon system, in fact, uses a different mechanism. It's a dye sublimation where a ribbon that has a whole bunch of color on it uh, rolls over the medium, and uh, as it does so, heat is applied so that uh, parts of the color that was on the film gets transferred over onto the medium. Uh, so between the two, you know, it has some properties that are uh, slightly different. So for instance, for the Epson, it's a lot easier to create uh, sharper lines by, you know, squirting these discrete dots onto the paper. Uh, whereas with the Canon, um, because it's not just bloating the entire paper with dots to be able to create a continuous tone from, you know, dark to light, uh, the dye sublimation mechanism tends to have nicer uh, gradients of tones as it comes across. Uh, but otherwise, the mechanism between the two are not that drastically different. They're using pretty much the same ink uh, dye, and they're both being applied onto the same uh, medium. Uh, the paper between the two are uh, both kind of glossy as it comes with the package. They both have five. And the cost of printing, you know, on a moving basis is more or less the same. Uh, they both cost roughly 30 cents to print each picture. Uh, so that's, you know, the, the general theory behind it. Um, now let's take a look at uh, what they managed to print and compare them. So first up, Exhibit A. Uh, this is the Canon, this is the Epson. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is the Canon's uh, film is a bit weird, actually. It has these perforated edges uh, that you need to remove after you print them. Uh, and I think the reason is because it needs to be able to, uh, again, go through the process of printing each different color uh, with each pass and you know as it prints the entire thing borderlessly uh, it needs to be able to latch onto something so that it can pull the whole film back into the printer again so you gotta remove these after you print them it's also kind of annoying because I think the software because it doesn't uh, seem to be as uh, you know uh, customizable as the one for Epson you know you can end up having these situations where it overprints a bit and you remove some of the medium but the crop is a bit different so um, you know that's the first thing to note now, just comparing between the two again, uh, you know, again, I'm doing this, you know, in a casual way. Uh, I'm not calibrating my printer, my uh, monitor. Uh, the printer is not set up in a very, you know, professional way. I just kind of hooked it up and then printed them. Uh, so, you know, this first picture is just, uh, you know, this microphone walking towards these uh, drafts. Um, so one, yeah, the, the color is very different, right, between the two. This is a bit uh, more pink than how it's represented on the monitor. Now this is a bit closer, but again, there's no vibrancy here, right? It's just uh, the whole thing is kind of mushy. The grass is, you know, there's no real definition here. Uh, it's just kind of boring. Uh, now onto this one, if we approach in and if my phone wants to autofocus here, uh, you can see looking at the sky, right? Again, this being an inject, what it'll do is that to be able to create kind of mixture of colors, it has to just, you know, squirt uh, these droplets of ink all over the place and then, you know, hopefully that if you back out, you'll not see these discrete drops and it'll look like a continuous color. But, you know, if you zoom in a bit, there is a lot of dots, right? And, you know, you, you could definitely see this as being something coming out of an ink jet printer. Whereas if we look at this one, uh, it's more continuous. Although, you know, there's some imperfections, I think, too, right? It's like the roller as it goes through, you can see a bit the lines uh, you know, coming across the, the, the paper. Uh, but it doesn't suffer from this problem of having these little dots. Uh, you know, the dithering is essentially is, is not perfected, I guess, as it prints this. Um, but otherwise, you know, I think this one goes uh, to the Epson here. The, the grass here is just, you know, very muted. Um, the color contrast is just not very present, whereas, you know, for this one, it's a lot richer. Uh, so that's number one. So the first one we're just looking at was printed off of a D90 during a bright daylight. Now we're going to up the ISO a bit. This is uh, done with uh, 640 uh, on a Fujifilm X-T1. It's a black and white one. And, uh, you know, first of all, again, the color renditions are a bit different. It's a bit greener here. It's a bit more pink here. Uh, and also, I think to note is that the Epson has a dedicated uh, black uh, ink, whereas the, um, the Canon uh, doesn't have the black. So it's just kind of creating the black out of the mixture of all the colors. Uh, now, speaking of the ink, again, uh, you know, between, again, the two different types of the dye application mechanisms, uh, the inkjet is theoretically supposed to be a bit more uh, resourceful in the way how they use it in the sense that each discrete color has its own uh, kind of capacity, 
Whereas for the ribbon, you know, it traverses that amount of ribbon for each picture printed anyway. So if you don't use it, uh, and if you just print, let's say, something that's uh, got a lot of, you know, just uh, white color, uh, the ribbon is used anyway, so you have to throw the whole thing away. Now between these two models though, it doesn't really matter because uh, uh, the Epson's uh, ink cartridge is one single thing. So if you ran out of one color, you have to throw the whole thing out. And you know, same with the uh, Canon, after you have run through the capacity of how many the ribbon is supposed to print, you have to throw the whole thing away as well. Uh, so it doesn't matter too much. Now again, back to this picture, um, you know, we can really see that the Epson performed way better in terms of just the uh, micro contrast uh, on the texture here between the edge of each of these uh, leaves. Uh, in this one, you know, it's still again kind of mushy. It's kind of, uh, you know, not as impactful as what the Epson managed to do. So, uh, you know, for this one again, uh, I think the uh, Epson takes uh, the price. Now we're taking a look at the last one. Uh, again, we're going up in the ISO. This is completely indoors. You know, not good lighting. Uh, ISO is 1600. Uh, it's inside of a church. And uh, in here, I kind of, you know, follow the same, you know, thought uh, trend. I expected the Canon to perform a lot worse, but uh, in fact, it the, the whole color rendition itself has a bit of a cartoony look to it, which, you know, in this case, uh, you know, it's not that bad considering the amount of detail there is and the fact that, you know, uh, the dye sublimation mechanism tends to perform not as good. Um, I think it did okay here. Uh, now, again, just looking at the two different window frames, you can clearly see what I'm talking about, right? Where uh, in one case, um, the edges are a lot sharper and, you know, a lot more noticeable, whereas in the other case, not so much. Uh, but nevertheless, I think in this case, both, you know, did a very good job. Uh, again, I think the Epson perhaps a bit sharper. Um, but yeah, the Canon outperformed my expectations on this one. So there it is again. Uh, we're taking a look at the two compact photo printers. Uh, you know, again, the criteria is where I'm not looking for an all-in-one printer. I'm really looking for a dedicated printer for just you know casual photo printing. Um, and I think you know in the end, it's it's not that deterministic. I think um, they're both doing okay for the purpose of you know what I'm trying to do, which is essentially just you know print things out and just tack them onto the wall or give it to a friend or stuff like that. Uh, again, the prices were this is 200, this is 100, and uh, here the dye sublimation I think is a technology that's I think on its way out. Um, it's a technology that was used for these one hour printers at the pharmacy, uh, but I think in general the inkjet is uh, more up and coming. Uh, not that it's necessarily superior, it's just kind of, you know, again, the CCD versus CMOS, one just happens to take the the market trend and you know becoming uh, more and more popular here but uh if the price was not a factor and i had to you know truly pick one um i think i'd probably go with the epson i think going forward you know getting more supplies would be easier uh, i think the canon is more preferable that you buy the ink and the paper together whereas the epson you get more kind of like mix and match you can you know buy it saying but use just any regular uh, paper whereas here you know again you're facing this kind of perforated, you know, paper issue here. Uh, but yeah, uh, in the end, you can decide for yourself what you like based on uh, what uh, you've seen. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.